To take a snapshot of early Christian life in the colonies, one must view it through the lens of Puritan settlers. They were trying to create a community that was going to be godly. The problem with the Puritans, they were not particularly tolerant people. They were, however, God-fearing and hard-working, so early on they set out to construct places of worship. There were no architectural plans for meeting houses. The basic structure of a meeting house is not so different from the structure of a barn. Sometimes these places were called God's barn. Few people know more about New England's surviving meeting houses than photographer Paul Wainwright. The retired scientist spent three years in meeting houses across the region, making the beautiful images that fill his book. In the mid-1990s, as digital photography began to become more popular, I made a conscious decision, and it was a lifestyle decision, to run like mad the other way. I bought a wooden camera, same technology that would have existed about 1880, 1890, because it's a different process for making a photograph. That process requires time. The uh, old ship meeting house is the oldest surviving meeting house in New England. The exposure for that photograph took 35 minutes. I started photographing meeting houses just because they are drop dead gorgeous. I'm not necessarily trying to show what they look like but I'm trying to show how I feel about them. I feel this sense of presence of the people who built and used these places. Wainwright tried to avoid showing modern changes that take the viewer out of the past, but when photographing at the Old South Meeting House, he made a single exception. The inside of the building has many different architectural styles because of its many uses over the last um, almost 300 years. But the steeple on this building is the original 1729 steeple. This steeple was once the highest point in Boston before progress reshaped the skyline. However, for one moment, past and present stand in harmony. Harmony is not what Dr. Leland Clark found in one historic flyer he uncovered. It's a historical document that a fight broke out. Booker T. Washington's sister, Maude, pulled out a hat pin and started stabbing people, and she got arrested. That century-old event when legendary educator Booker T. Washington came to a Boston church for a talk turned riot is just one of the colorful stories the BU professor unearthed while collecting local artifacts over the past 19 years. The so Discovering Roxbury Project came about when my father um, passed away in 2000 and we were cleaning out his closet and came across some photographs and scrapbooks and it has now taken me on this journey of finding these wonderful stories. That journey inevitably led to the black churches that shaped the community. The local churches have always been an interest of mine because we grew up in a church. Specifically, this church, People's Baptist, a place where the pastor, Reverend Wesley A. Roberts, is part of an exclusive club. Since 1918, I'm the third pastor in 100 years. Another claim to fame, a rare inscribed Paul Revere Bell. It was moved here when the building was being built. Dr. Clark's relationship to the Bell is more personal. I grew up here. My father was a custodian. When my brother went on to college, I received that honor of ringing the bell. Dr. Clark's project brings back the past for him and others. I found a photograph and I couldn't identify anyone in the photograph. It was a group of children that were all dressed in uniforms. I was at a wedding reception and someone was asking me about my work. And this man, he must have been about maybe 70 or so, started to cry. I'm in that picture. It is from St. Cyprian's. A copy of the photo, each boy identified by name, lives in St. Cyprian's, a church built by black Bostonians after getting the cold shoulder from white congregations. Like so many of the items from Clark's collection, the photo is a gateway to a larger story. There are 12 stained glass windows. They represent African-American people. Sojourner Truth, Martin Luther King Jr., Harriet Tubman. I don't know of any place in Boston that has such a collection. It demonstrates not only the ethnicity of this place, but the cultural significance And the term church once referred to a group of people who worship together. Asher Benjamin changed that. He wrote books for builders, and in the books, he labeled his worship meeting house design as 
church design. Soon after, every town wanted to worship in a Benjamin church. That is why that design can be found throughout the United States. Up next, when a church needs saving, who will be there?